So thanks for joining everybody. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, if you don't, if you haven't been to any classes yet, just know that I do have a pretty good variety of equipment, but you don't need equipment really. Um, please don't hesitate to shout out questions on mute and ask me questions. And then there's also the chat window. If you don't have weights, I have like jars of peanut butter here. Those are about a pound. Um, you can use like big heavy books, you know, anything you want to use. Um, I did see one person picking up her Labrador and doing squats with her Labrador retriever. So that was cute. So let's just go ahead and do some dynamic exercises here just to loosen up the joints. Just loosen it up. And we're going to breathe. Nice deep breath. So we're just letting the arms swing. Okay. And just breathe in. And don't forget that I am more than happy to take requests. So if you've got a body part that needs some work, some stretching or some strengthening, you just let me know and we will, we will work on it. So let's go ahead and move to the front now with the shoulders. It's not about height, it's about loosening up that joint. And nice deep breaths. All right, let's do some nice big circles to the back. <sighs> I'm realizing that this is a pajama shirt of mine, so I haven't changed out of my pajamas, but it's court one, so it works. So uh, you can't tell what time it is when you're on quarantine, I guess. So go ahead and do some nice big circles the other direction. <sighs> and we're breathing as we open up the chest. We're breathing in and exhaling and as we come forward. A couple more of those. If you can't quite get that far with your shoulders, you can just do like this. Work on the top of the calf, back of the knee. You got it. Request noted. Okay. Let's go ahead and just do some high marches. I challenge you to do these without moving your upper body. Okay. So really hold your core here using your glutes and shifting your weight just slightly side to side as we do this. Top of the calves near the knees, you got it. And just a few of those. So noon, my boyfriend works from home and he always takes his lunch break at noon, so he's always eating in front of me while I do this class. Ridiculous. Let's go ahead and do some kicks to the back now. Again, we're trying not to do the chicken, right? Trying not to move the upper body, staying nice and tall, and just warming up the quads and the hamstrings here. One thing that a lot of people do is they have this anterior pelvic tilt, right? We tend to stick out our butt. Let's try not to do that. Let's try to tuck your tailbone a little bit as we do these. And we're taking deep breaths. Just doing some nice dynamic warm ups. If you need a chair or you to use your wall, that's okay. My feet are just flexed. Let's go ahead now and we're gonna just do some, some toe point walk here, right? I'm just keeping my shoes on for now, but I'm trying to be a little dexterous in my feet, just warming up the feet, kind of being articulate through the toes. You can do that with your hands too if you want to. Imagine you're playing a lovely concerto, right? Move your fingers. My very dry hands. So you should be feeling this in, the, in that spot in the knees. Now when I step down, I am kind of pushing my knee backwards, not quite to a locked position, but I am using the calf. I'm lengthening the back of the leg here to do this. Okay, just bouncing side to side. And you can get your arms moving too. Good. Let's go ahead and do some hip abductions, right? So to abduct is to move something away from the body. The opposite of that is to adduct. You can just remember that you're adding something to the midline of the body to adduct. So an abduction, we're gonna try to balance. Again, if you need your chair, go for it, okay? And you're just gonna do a couple of these, just warming up 
the hips. I'm trying not to open up my toes, right? If you need an additional challenge, you can hold a weight on your thigh here, or you can put a band around your ankles. And now holding nice and tall. Just doing a couple of these, and you can practice your balance, of course. If you really want to, you can do overhead hands to really lengthen your upper body. Go ahead and do the other side. Remember, try not to open out your toes because then you're going to use the quads. We want to use the muscles on the side of the hip here. Standing nice and tall, balancing on this hip. Now some cardio was requested the last time. So I'm going to try to do some cardio. I haven't had a Good chance to look up some kickboxing, but I did do the belly dancing class yesterday. That was fun. We're not going to be doing that. Don't worry. <sighs> you don't want to see me do that. Go ahead and just loosen up those hips again, and we'll do some cardio. Um, unfortunately, I don't have music set up right now, so we're just going to have to use our imaginations. I will have music set up for next time. So I'm just going to grab my light set of weights here, okay? Your jars of peanut butter, whatever you want to grab. Move this out of the way before I trip on it. And we're just going to do a little bit of dancing, okay? You can sing whatever song you want in your head, okay? So the first thing we're going to practice here, let's just do a little side shuffle, okay? Just getting those arms moving. And you're going to have to just use whatever space you've got. And I'm not taking very big steps, right? But I'm moving my core here. I am isolating my upper body, just trying to get that core area warmed up. Really do need some music. I always end up with earth, wind, and fire in my head. I'm not going to sing it. You don't want that, okay? So just warm it up. Just tap and shift, okay? And you can really, you know, start grooving if you want to, okay? Just make sure that you are articulating through your feet. Don't thud your feet down, All right? Okay, so I'm starting to kind of take little lower steps now and turning my upper body, okay? So my feet are kind of perpendicular to each other when I do that, okay? And you're shifting your weight, right? Good, so we're gonna go ahead and do now like a little grapevine. I need to change this. I know we've got some dancers in the class, some Zumbaers or some line dancers, okay? So you'll know this one is like a side shuffle, okay? So we're gonna have to go to the side, back, side, front. Okay, so it's a shifting of weight, okay? So in the front, we go side or front, side, tap the side, right? You might wanna pick which one you do, either you're tapping to the front or to the back. So you're just gonna go ahead and do that. I like to tap to the back because it's easier, okay, and we're just grooving, okay, you really do need music, okay, and you can, of course, get your arms moving as well, just do whatever, you can't look any worse than I did in belly dancing yesterday, so don't worry about it, I would recommend it though. It's actually uh, feels really nice on the hips. If you've got some limited mobility in the hips and the legs, it'd be good to do, really help you with your balance, your coordination. Okay, so we're just gonna do one more in each direction. Okay, and now we're gonna go in a diagonal. Now, I don't have much space, so we're gonna do our best, right? You know, to the front, okay, and then to the back. So going across my room. Okay, and backwards. If you're having trouble with the coordination, just make something up. Just keep moving. Okay, and then to get to the other side, you just go sideways and go the opposite direction. I'm here to challenge your brain and your body. Okay, just grooving. Now, when you say the back of the knee like that, is it tight or does it need strengthening or both? Go ahead and change direction. I'm gonna do a little bit more. Q 
keep the knees soft. I see a lot of times when people are doing these kind of things, they tend to lock the knee and then thud the heel down. We're articulating through the foot. If I do this in slow motion, right, I'm going like this, okay? We don't have to be very rigid with this one. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, okay? Go ahead and do one more in each direction. And relax, grab a drink of water and do a little bit more cardio. I really would recommend that belly dancing class though, everyone, you can modify as you need. It was a lot of fun. As long as you're willing to uh, tie a scarf around your hips and make a complete fool of yourself, then you're all good. Okay. Let's just go ahead now and we're gonna do some jumping jacks, not really. But we're just gonna kinda tap, lift those weights overhead, keeping that heart rate up. Go ahead and keep doing that. I gotta check something here. I can't see if anybody is uh, has their video on in this mode. Otherwise I would, oh, I see some familiar names. Hi everybody. Okay. Sorry, hang on just one second. There we go. All right, so for those of you who need to practice your coordination, okay, this is a good one. So we're just tapping one leg and lifting the same arm, okay? Not a great dance move, but it's about shifting the weight. So left side, so from this side, I'm on my left side, I'm on my right side, okay? Just shifting the weight. And if you really wanna challenge yourself, you can do opposite arms. So you'd go here, okay? Just keep it breathing. I'm trying to get that heart rate up. I'm gonna do opposite. Right, just keep it moving. I am rotating my hips as well. Okay. Just singing some earth, wind, and fire to myself in my head. Joe, take your phone. Okay, a couple more. All right, finish your last one and just gonna march in place for a moment. And I'm gonna ditch these weights. And let's just march in place. We're gonna reach up and down a couple times. Just slow in the heart rate. I hope all of you are gonna take a nice walk today. It's so beautiful outside. I was out on my patio doing some gardening, trying to plant some scallions, and I got a little sunburn on my forehead. That's how you know it's spring. Go ahead and just swing those arms a little bit, just slowly Whew. lowering that heart rate a little bit. All right, I'm gonna grab my medium weights and we're gonna do some weightlifting. So we're just gonna go ahead and start with some forearms here. Now I'm allowing my shoulder to stay rigid, okay? I'm not moving the shoulder. I'm just rotating at the elbow, okay? So you should see my elbow and then you should see the inside of my arm. So that's what we're doing, trying to warm up those muscles of the forearm. Use weights that feel right for your body. Yeah, those of you that are gardeners, I'm sure you are happy right now, getting everything ready to plant. You should be really feeling this in the forearms. If you're feeling it in the shoulders, make sure that you're engaging your back, okay, to keep your shoulders more stable. All right, 
let's go ahead and bring them those palms facing you. Let's make sure that we're not flexing the wrists, right? We're going to keep the, the wrists in line and we're just going to do some hammer curls. Okay. If you're comfortable, you can do an overhead press. Okay. Now remember when you do your overhead press, we don't want to end up hunched over like this. We don't want to lean back like we're driving a cool car. We want to stay nice and rigid. So you'll bring them up and then straight overhead to cover up your ears. Okay, and down, nice and slow. Use whatever weights you're comfortable using. And just keep it breathing. It's a very practical movement. Okay, being able to lift things overhead. Especially if you've got little grandchildren that you wanna lift up. If you wanna put stuff on a shelf overhead. Nice deep breaths. Or if you're lifting your dance partner, congratulations, that's impressive. A couple more. And you'll notice that I am not allowing my shoulders to hunch up, okay? Now, if you're, if you're in the position where you have a tight shoulder or an injured shoulder, I'm not looking for max range of motion here, especially with weights. So you're just gonna do the hammer curl and do like a field goal. Okay, so that's exactly what you'll do. And you can use light weights too, of course. Okay, so that's what you'll do. And you'll feel this in the tops of the shoulders. Last one. Good, and relax. Forearms are tired. I'm gonna switch to my lighter weights. I'm gonna practice working on the supraspinatus. This is the most commonly injured rotator cuff muscle. And it attaches. You usually feel it right here in the corner of the shoulder, right? And what it does, it attaches down from under, under here in the neck, goes underneath the clavicle and the shoulder blade, okay? And then attaches to the humerus here. So lifting the arm becomes very difficult because it has to pull on the arm to lift it up. And that's, if you've ever injured that muscle, you know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? So go ahead and grab your light set of weights. And you're gonna go ahead and just do some T's. Now, if you cannot do a T, do one of these numbers. Go to the height that you can do evenly on both sides. So you can only get to right here on one side, but you can go all the way up on the other. Too bad, do them evenly, okay? I mean. And I'm not locking my elbows, they're just soft, okay? Engaging the back. If you don't have weights, uh, bands will work as well. They're gonna be tougher. You can put them around your feet and then try to lift your band. So that would look like, that would look like this with the band. Okay, just make sure you get both sides evenly. And you're taking deep breaths. Two more. Good, and relax. I find that when we have more of a sedentary lifestyle, the upper back starts to get weak, right? We start caving forward like this. So we wanna work the muscles of the upper back as well, in between the shoulder blades, okay? There's a lot. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna stand hip width apart, okay? And I'm just gonna keep my knees soft as I lean forward, just gently push my hips back, lean forward. You don't need to be very far down, okay? But we're gonna bring those weights all the way up to the armpit the best that we can, and then we're gonna extend the arms backwards at the same time we squeeze those shoulder blades together. So we're working the triceps and the muscles of the upper back. So squeeze those shoulder blades together, pull those weights up to the armpit, and then extend to the back. <sighs> Take a nice deep breaths. Make sure you're not pushing your knees back. Relax those knees. I'm gonna use heavier weights. It's almost too heavy. Just go nice and slow. 
you should feel this in the lower back too. If you if it's hurting you, just come up. Okay, and you'll do the same thing. You can also do one at a time if you want. Deep breaths. One more. And relax, good. Come on up nice and slow. And we'll work on some lower back some more. So I'm gonna just keep my eight pounders here. By the way, a gallon of milk weighs eight pounds. So once you're done with your milk, just you know use the empty thing, fill it with water, it weighs about eight pounds and you can just hang on to it and use it for a weight, okay? All kinds of ways to modify. So we're gonna bring these weights right in front. And this is gonna be new for a lot of you. We're gonna do a different kind of deadlift. So usually we're just bending forward, keeping the legs stationary and pushing the hips forward, right? Keeping the weights roughly along the shins. But today we're gonna to make it harder, okay? So nice and tall in the upper body, core is engaged, knees are not locked. You're gonna hinge forward, bringing those knees all the way to the front of the kneecaps, right below the kneecaps. And then you're gonna keep the weights along the shins as you squat down, straighten the legs, and then come back up, okay? Depth is not important here. If you can only go to here, and then bend, and then up again, that's fine. Form is the most important. Whoops. Yes, I need heavier weights for this one. You're gonna feel this in your lower back. And this is tricky, so please, if you have questions, do not hesitate to ask me. So you're hinging forward against, keeping the weights against the legs. When you get to the kneecaps, you'll bend the legs, hips back in a squat. You'll straighten the legs, and then you'll come all the way back up. Deep breaths. So you're really gonna feel this in the hamstrings and the low back. Take it slow. Let's do one more. And all the way up. Good. Set them down correctly and grab a drink of water. Okay, let's go ahead, change gears just a little bit. Calves, I don't wanna forget about calves. So let's go ahead and just take a minute to stretch out the calves and then we'll work on some fine muscle control. So I'm gonna take off my shoes, you don't have to. And you can use, I know we've got a towel from court one Everybody seems to have a towel from court one. You're just gonna roll it up, leave it right there on the floor. And you're just gonna put the ball of your foot and some of your arch on that towel, okay? So your heels, your weight is in your heels. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna bend one knee and then push the other one back, not quite to locked, okay? But you're just alternating. And yes, your hips are going to move. Let your hips move so that the knees have a place to go. And if you need more stretch, which I do, you can use something taller. Okay, so I'm just gently pushing that leg back. Again, not blocking the knee, just gently pushing it back as I lift this hip to bend the knee forward. You're just alternating. Taking deep breaths. Very important, going nice and slow. Again, you don't need your shoes off for this one. I just find that it's easier to stretch without them. So 
So this should really be loosening up the hamstrings, the backs of the thighs, and of course the calves. Try to relax the toes, don't clench up those toes. If you find a spot that feels really good, you should hold it for 15 to 20 seconds at least. And we're taking deep breaths. Another one. And this should feel really nice on the backs of the legs. It's important that we're not slouching as we do this. We wanna create length in the muscles so that we really get the entire muscle. Let's go ahead and do each side one more time. Whoa. If you're uh, recovering from a knee injury or a foot injury, this is really important. You should be doing these multiple times a day. Very important to keep these muscles mobile. So let's go ahead now. I'm gonna keep my foam pad here. If you have something similar, you can do the same. You can use your towel if you want to, but I'm gonna have to use the wall for this one because my balance is not as good as I'd like. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna hang our calves off the edge here. If you don't have this, don't worry about it. Just do everything that I'm doing without the foam thing or thing between beneath your feet. So you're just gonna start nice and tall and it's kind of weird because your weight wants to shift backwards so your hips wanna do something funky. You gotta really lift up as high as you can. Try not to lock those knees and you're gonna tuck your tailbone just gently underneath, okay? And you're sitting nice and tall, nice and lifted. And you're gonna try to go all the way from heels down to lifted up. That's very difficult, okay? So make sure you have something to catch you if you need it. And try not to let your ankles like roll out either direction, okay? And keep your chin lifted like you're stuck up at a cocktail party, okay? Breathing, holding core. It's really tough, especially if you're on something unstable. You're gonna feel your toes crunch up. Try to spread them out. Let your toes create a larger base of support. And you're breathing. Oh, I can cheat. I have a beam up here I can hold on to. Of course you are breathing. And do this slowly because when you come down, this is the moment that you stretch. Don't lock the knees. And you're really lifting, getting sucked through a straw all the way up. Don't let the ankles roll outwards. And then you come all the way down and let yourself stretch out. Keep doing that very, very slowly. So I want you to see what I mean about the feet here. I see a lot of people rolling their ankles outwards when they do calf presses. If you have bunions, I see this very commonly, okay? So you wanna make sure that you're not rolling to the outsides of your feet. Keep your big toe rooted down. As you press all the way up, it should look like you're wearing high heels, okay? Spread out those toes and come all the way down. Unlock the knees and do your stretching. Let's do two more. You're gonna try to hold as long as you can. I never said this was easy. Very, very difficult. Whew. And come on down. Go ahead and just take a moment to stretch now. If you don't have a squishy pad, you can just do a, a calf stretch like this. Just pushing that back heel down and bending your front knee forward. Nice long stride here. Okay. Ah, try not to lock this back knee. That's very tough. Go ahead and switch sides if you're doing your lunge. If you have a squishy, just keep stretching. Your calves are gonna feel really nice and loose after today. Again, try not to bend, or I'm sorry, try not to lock this back knee. Whew. 
as I'm locking my back knee. Don't do that. So we're not in a warrior position, right? Our hips are not open. We're actually trying to keep them forward for this one. All right. I'll do just a couple more strength building exercises and then we're gonna do some extra stretching today. Be nice and loose for the weekend. Because I, I know you all have exciting weekend plans, right? I'm gonna hang out with my plants on the patio. All right. So let's go ahead. I want to practice some squats. I know that I drilled these constantly, but they are so practical. Okay. So let's do it a little bit differently today, actually. Let's do some wall sits. If you have a wall, go for it. If you're not in a space that has a wall, I'll show you what we'll do with the chair. So you're gonna push your whole back up against the wall, okay? Like you're getting pushed up against it. And what we're gonna do is bring our feet away so my butt is smushed up against this wall. My feet are away so that when I bend down, my knees are directly over my ankles, right? <laughs> and you're gonna hold right here. Push yourself into the wall, engage those quads. And breathe, that's important. Just hang out here like it's no big deal. If it's too easy, hang on lower, hold the weight. Put your Labrador Retriever on your lap. That's too much for me. And you're holding, squeeze that butt, squeeze your belly, squish. There's a painting in front of me that you can't see and it's been crooked this whole time. It's bothering me. And you're breathing, you're still holding. When you're done, when you can't handle anymore, just push off the wall, lean forward and use your hands to push forward. Okay, but otherwise we're still holding. Keep your feet even, even as you can. Squeeze your butt. Keep it engaged the whole time. And go ahead and lean it forward. Your butt should be on the wall now, okay? You're gonna try to shift your weight onto the heels. And press yourself up nice and slow, hips forward. Whew. You can use your chair or the wall. Let's stretch those quads for a moment. Quadriceps, or the muscles of the front of the thigh, are very powerful. They're very big muscles. And their main thing that they do is extend the leg. So if you're weak at the knee, and you have trouble extending your leg, strengthening the quadriceps is important. I can't walk without them. So just stretching the quads for a moment here. Do we have any other requests, comments, concerns, complaints for management? Be more than glad to accommodate requests, everybody. All right, let's go ahead and sit on the very edge of our seat. We're gonna make sure that our knees are directly over our toes. I see a lot of people doing this with their feet too far back. If you have trouble getting in and out of a chair without your hands, if you like push off with your hands, or if you do this, or if you bring your knees together, you need to be working on squats, okay? Proper form squats. And there's a lot of ways that you can make this easier on yourself to, to maintain your form. If you have a way to like hold a towel and pull on the towel, that's a really good way to do it too. Uh, you can involve your spouse if you really wanna subject them to that, okay? And what we're gonna do is just suck it in and up, okay? Push your feet through the floor, abs, you got it. I will do abs in just a moment, okay? So you're gonna push your feet into the floor, sitting up nice and tall, squeeze your butt, lean it forward, and you're gonna hover right over your chair. Try not to end up like this, okay? Nice straight back. And you're gonna sink it back down. And if you want, you can breathe, slouch for a moment, and then repeat. Okay, if you really want to, you can come all the way up and push the hips forward every time. Yeah, we're just gonna do a few of those 
again, do what you can. If you, it's really hard for you to get out of the chair, then just start standing and you're gonna do these tiny like this, okay? If they're too easy, you know what you have to do. You can hold weight, you can go lower, whatever you want. A couple more. The quads are feeling it. Last one. Good, and relax. Side note, every exercise that we do in this class, you should be working your abs. You should be holding your core, okay? Oh, we're just working the calves. Well, we really wanna also keep the core lifted the whole time. So anytime you're in my class is always an ab class, okay? But now we'll do some targeted ab muscle exercises. You can do this in a chair or on the floor. That's up to you. I'll give you a minute to get on the floor or into position. Grab your water. And I'm just going to hold my eight pounder here. Okay. Ah, you can do this on a ball too. If you're in a chair, you'll just have your feet down on the floor. And I'd recommend crossing your ankles and just letting your knees kind of open out a little bit to the side. I have to do that on the floor too. So we're just going to start by puffing the chest out towards the ceiling so the back's nice and flat. You're going to keep the weight right on the chest. You're going to do small little twisting movements. If twisting is a no-go, you're just going to do sit-ups. Okay? Tiny little sit-ups. You should feel that right there. Oh, I'm going to do my twists. Okay. So we're not twisted. I see a lot of people just moving the arms. Okay. My, my abdomen is not moving at all. You need to make sure that you are rotating the rib cage. Keep breathing. A few more. And come back to center and roll all the way up. Take a breather. All right, let's just go ahead and do some plain old sit-ups. Again, if you're in a chair, you can just imagine that you're gonna tap your shoulder blades to the chair and then come all the way up. You may feel that a lot in the lower back. I'll give a modification in just a moment. Otherwise, what I'd like to see is you're down, cross those ankles, or better yet, put the bottoms of your feet together, and you're gonna do plain old sit-ups and you're gonna tap your toes, okay? Every time, tapping your toes. Modification. We'll go ahead and do some laterals, okay? Just hold the weight in one hand, or you can hold it in both and alternate. You know, up and over, holding the core, and imagine that you're arcing sideways. If you have a low back injury, please don't do this one. What you're gonna do is just hold right at the, uh, at the chest, forward, and you're gonna hold right here. And you should feel that like crazy right in the belly. So I'm gonna do that. It seems easy, but it's not. I know my shirt's baggy, but I am holding my core as hard as I can. If you wanna challenge yourself, whoo. Holding, holding, holding. And bring it in and relax. Go ahead and put your hands on your knees in your chair. If you're on the floor, you can go into a tabletop position. And we're gonna do a modified downward dog here. So you're gonna puff out that chest, look towards the ceiling, engage the shoulder blades back. And then opposite, make sure you're tilting the hips. Okay, so you should really see the hips changing angles here. So you're starting on your sit bones on the very bottom and then you're kind of rolling onto the tailbone. Deep breaths. Belly button is pressed in and up towards the spine. Really move the back. 
That was my hip that just popped. Good. Let's go ahead and hold that weight in front again or do your preferred core exercise. Just going to hold right here. Try to relax your shoulders. So everybody, I'm giving you homework, and that is to get outside. That doesn't mean go to Meijer or Walmart. It means go outside for a walk. Get some vitamin D. Ooh, keep them lifted, bring them in, and relax. Some more cat cow. When you do these, the cat cow, when you open the rib cage forward, when you're arcing your back this way, inhale as much as you can. Let the lungs expand. They come all the way down to here. So really breathe into the belly and exhale. A couple more. I'm getting some nice cracks out of my back. Feels really good. Cat cow is not about pushing to your maximum range of motion. It's about continuous motion, like a wave, keeping your spine fluid. One more. Nice long neck. And relax. I'm going to check the time. Go ahead and grab some water. Ah, perfect. I'm getting a lot of requests for shoulder and neck stretches. That Netflix is getting to you, huh? So we are going to start. Let's go ahead and just do a passive hip stretch while we do this, okay? Do your best to cross one leg over the other, and we're just going to hold it there. Don't worry about it, okay? From here, I'm going to take my left hand, and I'm going to put it on the right side of my face, and I'm going to turn my head. Now, I'm not going to tilt my head. I'm only going to turn it like a little Lego character, okay? I'm just going to hold it there, and I am using my hand, my thumb, to gently leverage the chin backwards towards the shoulder. And you will feel that right in the side of the neck here, maybe even into the shoulder. And you're breathing. Deep, deep breaths. And go ahead and release. And now you take your right hand, put it on the right side of your face, and kind of right on the chin here, right, right in the bottom of your cheek, and then just turn it. You shouldn't be, like, moving your jaw as you do this. Try not to move your jaw. Okay. And turn. It might feel different on both sides of the body, and that's okay. Take a nice deep breath, especially if you have tight shoulders. Mm. We're gonna do the other side again. Okay, so I'm gonna take my left hand, put it on the right side of my face. I'm gonna do the same thing, except this time I take my right hand and extend it with a flexed hand here, okay? Holy shoulder, you should feel this all the way down your ulnar nerve, basically, all the way from the thumb up into the wrist, into the shoulder, okay? You should really feel this. If it's too much, just lower the hand. This is one of those great examples of the kinetic chain. Everything in your body is connected. I feel this in my pinky all the way up into my ear. Okay, keep taking nice deep breaths. And then keep the head where it is, lower the hand slowly. Let's release the hand from the head and you're just gonna roll the head, chin towards the chest. You're gonna end up on the other side. 
get your hand on your face there. Make sure you've washed your hands. I guess we shouldn't be touching our faces, right? And you're just gonna flex that hand. Deep breaths. This is relaxing time, everybody. So close those eyes. Think about what you're going to do this weekend. Think about your family that you're going to call. Deep breaths. Release that tension. Think about all those sewing projects you're going to finish. That paint by number that's been sitting in the closet for a year. Go ahead and drop the hand down nice and slow. Release the head forward. And let's go ahead now, we're going to tilt the head, okay? So before we were just turning it like we're shaking our head no, okay? Now we're going to imagine that we're putting eardrops in. So you're gonna sit up nice and tall. Let's switch hips, okay? Just sit up nice and tall. And you are going to just tilt the head. Imagine that you're trying to get as side, your head as sideways as possible without your shoulders coming with. So don't bring your shoulders with. And you'll feel that right on the side of the neck. You can use your hand to uh, leverage your chin upwards. Right, so from the bottom, you'll push it this way. And then you can, of course, flex the hand. It's a lot. Deep breaths. If it's too much, slowly come up. Don't come out of neck stretches quickly. Roll the head to the other side. And of course you can flex the hand ah, if you're able. I am lengthening too, I'm not just lifting it there. I'm, I'm trying to reach the hand. Go ahead and roll the head forward and just do some circles. We're not gonna go all the way to the back. We're just gonna kinda do some circles in both directions. Oh, if you find a spot that feels good, go ahead and hold it. Let's put those hands, go, i uh, keep this hip here actually because we held the other one for a lot longer. So let's go ahead and put the hands right on the shoulders and you're gonna bring the elbows to the back and just do some circles. Keep your fingers exactly where they are. And you should be able to feel a lot of things going on in that shoulder joint. Like you're trying to draw a big circle with the elbows. Change direction. One more. Good, go ahead and bring that hip down and let's just go ahead and do some twisting here. Just gentle, don't push the knees open. I'm just using it as a little bit of leverage, shoulders down and back, rotating the chest. And you're just gonna do that nice and slow. Oh yeah. You may find that even though it's already one o'clock, you may find that it's easier to do a lot of these stretches later in the day and that's okay. It's just part of the body's natural rhythm. Let's go ahead and finish up with a couple more cat cows. And please, um, please remind me if you want more requests, if you have more requests, if you want me to do different things, please tell me your feedback is very important. If you like the classes that you are taking online and you want to see them in the real world when the apocalypse ends, please email either me or Kirk or Corey, email someone and let us know. It's very helpful. Go ahead and take one deep breath up. I had my palms facing the ceiling. And I'm going to rotate them down, push the air down. Let's go forward. And exhale. 
Nicely done, everybody. I'll be here.